Okay, welcome to my future outdoor kitchen. Uh, Mike and I are gonna start to work through this. The big question I have with NatureCast is, is this DIY? You know, is this a DIY thing that you could do if you had, uh, you know, some skills? Uh, and so we're gonna do a couple of different videos here. We're gonna do sort of a project style, start to finish, show you the setup of, of the cabinets. Uh, I don't have my Evo yet, and I don't have my grill yet. I'm gonna order those. Uh, the Evo's on the way. The, the El Fresco grill we're gonna do, I gotta order uh, later today. Uh, but uh, we're gonna kind of show you how a setup goes and how to put it together. Uh, this is very similar, there's a few more steps, but very similar to like if you bought some cabinets for your garage. So I think if you have that skill set, you can put this together. It has self-leveling feet, or not self-leveling, but turn, you can turn the knob so it has leveling feet, and you just kind of screw the cabinets together. Where there's a little skill that comes in is we have to then cut some back panels and things like that. Uh, but I think um, one of the things I want to get rid of in this world of custom cabinetry, it's really not all that custom, it's pretty modular. Uh, and so we're putting together, we have our design team that designed this for me. And so the design part is the hard part. Uh, and the question is we're gonna answer here over the next couple of days or couple of weeks is, how, how do we put this together? How hard is it? And can I teach you how to do it? So this setup became very expensive because there was no storage outside this house. This house wasn't designed to have a pool. Uh, so they put the pool in after the fact. And so there was no storage anywhere. Uh, and so these were very, very expensive. These, uh, these, these cabinets cost more than the main array for the grill. Uh, and so Mike's setting up here and getting it plumb. We're kind of figuring out how this stuff works. Well, I'm figuring out, Mike probably already knows, but um, we're, uh, we're, we're getting it mounted to the wall. Like how I say we all the time, Mike's getting it mounted to the wall and I'm handing him stuff. Uh, but we're gonna do uh, some side panels on this as well. So it looks finished, those are sitting over there. Uh, but these are 36 by 96, I believe. So eight feet, eight feet tall. Uh, which will give us tons of storage for all the pool toys and all that kind of stuff. And then over here is an L-shaped array. Um, we have our, our back pieces here. We have our toe kicks, which we're going to cut to fit. Um, this is where the little bit of custom comes in. We order these the right length. You order these in panels, uh, and then we'll cut them on the table saw. We'll show you that should be pretty simple. Uh, corner cabinet just to make the turn. Uh, giant, large garbage can, uh, which takes a lot of expensive real estate, but I think the garbage can is the most important part of the outdoor kitchen out here. Uh, this is where the Evo cooktop, the 30G is going, and then we have uh, here's just a couple of flanking. There's, a, there's another one of these on that side. Uh, what we're doing is a 42 inch. I built the cabinet so I could do the 56, but I realize I do most of my cooking on the Evo anyway. Uh, so we're going to do a 42 inch alfresco with a 40 nine inch, I believe, or maybe it's 48 inch uh, Venta hood, uh, 1200 CFM Venta hood, which will which will pull out. We're going to put a TV here and then we're going to do uh, custom countertops, which I think could be pretty cool. So we're going to do some uh, concrete custom countertops. So I found this company uh, that makes uh, um, countertop solutions. It's called uh, Counterform, uh, which we'll talk more about that. It'll probably be a separate video we get into into that. But you can see how the doors are made. So these are a resin, it's a composite. You could throw this in the bottom of the pool for 100 years, pull it back out, and it would look exactly the same. Maybe a little bit of algae on it, but um, this stuff is uh, really, really expensive, but also super, super cool for being here, especially in Florida or any kind of humidity or snow or elements. Um, so Mike took all the doors off so he could get it squared up. Um, these bottom doors are, are connected, so we'll do a single door handle <coughs> on this. Uh, and I bought some, uh, some T304. I like this company called Top Knobs, but I bought some T304 hardware so, uh, so that it won't rust. And then the screws we're using are, uh, are called Simpson, Simpson Strong Tie. These are designed for wood and um, for this PVC material. So you can see the stuff has a, uh, the, the backs of this, this is PVC. So it's like a, it's a plastic composite. Uh, we'll get into that as we kind of work through this. But 
Anyway, we'll okay, grab you some footage of uh, what this looks like before, and then we're gonna work through. We're gonna do a how-to, and we'll do an after. So this is gonna be a big project we're gonna work through over the next couple of weeks, and uh, I'm excited to share it with you. All right, so these were the expensive, uh, I'm doing it for the people choice here, right? These big giant closets. Really, I mentioned earlier, we don't have any storage out here in the pool deck, and so I needed to get some sort of storage for like cushions and stuff like that. So that's what these two cabinets are largely gonna become our sort of cushion storage, I think. We'll take these shelves out of the middle here and, and get it set up. But install is pretty simple, right, Mike? I mean, you you need to find plumb, right? So you need to yep. level the feet. The feet have little twisties on them. Yep, you need plumb in both directions. So you need plumb front to back, side to side, and then mm -hmm. also you need to check for square. So you'll pull a diagonal with tape measure <clears throat> from that corner to that corner, yeah. that corner to that corner, they should be within, you know, a sixteenth. So what if it's not? Then you have to then change have to the feet. Make, then you have to figure out what's why it's racked. You okay. got one foot off or another. So basically, it's like a parallelogram. If you yeah. have them off one way or the other, it can still look plumb. Yeah. But one could be one side could be higher than the other. So okay. you just if it's racked, you just need to lower one side completely. Yeah. And it will still stay plumb, but you'll get rid of the racking. So. Shims, how do shims come into this equation here? So what you do is you find, like for instance, this wall is bowed out in the center. Okay. So the center, if we were to screw it right now, it's gonna to touch in the center, there's gonna be a gap at the bottom and a gap at the top. Okay. So I'll screw off the center, you know, roughly mid, mid, mid height, and yeah. then I'll have to shim the top and the bottom so I'm not basically bending the cabinet to, the, to form the wall. Because if you do that, your, door, your doors won't yeah, line up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You need so you start, we start with one, Yep. You, you got the dis you got the distance off the, the wall, distance. so we're yeah, measuring we're, from this from that to thingy. here's nine and a half inches is yep. what we have per side. <clears throat> so that so way we're centered. So these work, are two thirty inch right. cabinets. Work with one cabinet first, get this one set, and then that one this one dictates that one. Got it. So then what I would do is I'll bring this one over next to it. We'll screw the frame the, the boxes together yep. and make sure that they're flush. We already know this one's gonna be plumb, so if we screw this one to this one, it will then be right. plumb as well. So we just need to make sure they're the same height and then the faces are flush. And then we screw them together and then we can screw this one to the wall. And more than likely, this one's gonna need shims as well. Got so. it. So let me go show you guys over here what the finished one looks like. So here, this is a 36 inch cabinet. So the 36 inch cabinet has a divider about in the middle. The 30 inch has a single. So actually the 30 inch is in many ways more useful than this, uh, this 36 that has more cubbies. Uh, so these are 36 inches wide and eight feet tall. Uh, those are 30 inches wide and eight feet tall just because of the distance I had. And so you can see we've finished this one up where I put the handles on. We'll show you how to do the hardware as well. There's a little template tool that I bought that I'd like to start selling in the store, selling in the store soon. Um, but Mike took all the doors off. It's easier to kind of get them set up. And then from here, uh, we put the side panels on. And I spent the extra money to do uh, the side panel on this side too just because from the window, you can kind of see the unfinished look here. The only thing we haven't done to this cabinet is the toe kick. So uh, it's gonna be a really awesome setup for anything to do with grilling or outdoor kitchen stuff, um, kids stuff out here in the pool. Uh, I think what, I, what, I'm, what I'm trying to figure out now is what should I do with storage. And I think what I'm gonna do is um, we're gonna take the, like the cushions that come off. I think the cushions, that's gonna be stored in that one. Uh, and then what I may do is kind of reserve this cabinet for the kids stuff and then I'll save this cabinet for, I don't know what kind of grilling stuff I need that wouldn't go over there. Um, so we'll see, just things that I don't want to bend over to get. Maybe if I have like a pizza oven or something, or some sort of fryer, this could be a good place for it. Uh, but uh, what I'm doing now is just kind of putting the, putting the drawers or the, the, the shelves together. I'm gonna wipe it out. So I just vacuumed out this one. Uh, I just need to wipe it down. But see all this inside here, this is all PVC. So it's all, um, you know, waterproof. Like seriously, not just water resistant, truly waterproof. So, okay, so I got that bottom corner pinned. So now I'm going to have to, uh, we're plumb. So I'm gonna start shimming back here screw it in the middle, shim at the top, and then screw it off at the top. And that'll, that'll be this side first, and then I'll work my way over to here. What kind of shims are you using here? Using these plastic shims right here. Since we're outside, we use these. These are bi-directional, 
brake shims. Well, anyway, the composite, I think to me that's plastic. But anyway, so yes, I'm using these. And then what I do is, what's sticking out after the fact, I go with my multi-tool and just buzz them off right flush with the edge of the cabinet. So, yep, that's good there still. Okay, what I like to do is go through the shim. got this side attached so what I want to do is check it here check my diagonals because if this is the time when you can raise these feet and basically lift or lower this side of the box now, theoretically if you put a level on top and it's level it should be square but I always like to check so that's 94 and 13 sixteenths, 94 and 7 eighths, so we're si within a 16th. I call that good. You're within a 16th, that's good. You chase after a 16th all day long. And that's plumb. So I think we're touching in the back at the bottom, just like we are over there. So I'll screw off the bottom, and then I'll need shims midway and at the top because the wall is basically tipped that way. All Matt's stuff's in Helen, so we're all bringing tools over to help him, help them, help him out. He needs all the help. <laughs> he needs all the help, you know? Poor guy. Now here's a perfect example. You can see how down there, it's touching, the back is touching, and as you come up, more and more and more gap. And the cabinet's plumb, so it's the wall that's leaning, so. That one over there wasn't too bad. This one's more, more out of plumb than the other side. And quick, on the shims, you want them opposing. So you have two shims with the fatter wedge on, on the outsides, and then when, as you slide them together, they get thicker and they stay flat. If you just use one shim and you screw, it can twist because the shim is tapered, so you always want to use two if you can. Okay, that's good. That's it as far as anchoring. Now I'll throw, I'll throw a few more in. Just, I'd like to have. Uh, this is six screws. I'd like to have, you know, probably twelve in it just because they could put a lot of heavy things in here and you know, just be, make me feel better. And plus, I don't, I don't really trust tap cons as much as I would something else, you know, like a screw into wood. So I'll, I'll put some extras in. I'm gonna set this one back. What I'll have to do is adjust the feet so they're at the same elevation and get it, get it you know, uh, parallel with this one. And then, uh, then I can screw the boxes together and then I can shim this side because what I'll do is the shims that are sticking out the back side of this cabinet, this cabinet will rest against those same shims. So I'll screw where those other shims are and then I'll have to shim this side and screw this side off. So you're saying these shims here, it's gonna yeah. sit against. Yeah, those shims are sticking out already, right? So I'll shim right against, I straighten this one out a little bit if I can. So if the cabinets are coming, they're touching each other, it'll come right against the shim be at the same the same distance out from the wall as that cabinet so as you can see <laughs> they're way difference in height this 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 foot is all the way up on this outside because the concrete slopes so this foot is all the way up this cabinet's level so now i have to put this foot further up to bring the whole cabinet's got to go up about three quarters of an inch so what i use Pry bar. I come up under the toe kick and lift up like so, and then I spin these out. And try that. Now we're way leaning back. 
because I have to adjust the rear. So, and actually the front's too high. So, down a little bit. It's closer. So this is something you have to work your way up. It's not gonna happen first adjust. You're gonna have to play with it back and forth. Get a two by four to pry off the fulcrum, and then I have to tip it forward and reach back there with something and adjust those back feet. These are flush, so now what I have to do or a clamp. Now we're flush down here and flush in the face. So now I start screwing. I might work my way up. You see they're flush all the way up. Pinch them together, screw them together. And what I'm using for that is we have these outdoor wood screws from. So they're stainless and they're coarse and they're for composite square drive inch and a quarter this is three quarter each so inch and a half the tip would likely bury poke through if you bear, if you countersunk it so I countersink it slightly so it's actually digging in probably an inch and three eighths so probably about right there pretty good at this uh, buying stuff yes you are <laughs> you are good at buying stuff I get the square drive bit for these this out of here, this out of here. Okay, just countersunk. So I'm gonna pull that. Come up here, that's nice and flush. I'm using so many screws is because it is composite it's not wood I wouldn't be using this many if they were you know hardwood cabinets or you know hardwood brace frames you wouldn't need this many so now that we know this one's anchored the face frame the, the boxes are now together the faces are nice and smooth they're at the same elevation so now what I'll do is I'll screw off this side of the cabinet because it's on the same shim that it shares the shim with this side. So I'll screw it off down this side, I think in five places, and then I'll go to this side, shim it, and then this will be done. Then we can hang, rehang the doors and put the, the side panels that go on too. They get, they get a panel adhesive and screws. So we'll do that too. Probably do that before we hang the doors. Anyway, so that's, that's what we'll do next, Let's get screwed off. So this side's all attached, this side's attached, this side's attached. So these, both these cabinets are done except for this outside here. So what I'll do is we'll need some shims. We'll get it shimmed off. And see now out here, it's just touching right down here. So yeah, it's touching in the middle of the panel back there. So I'm gonna have to shim even down here just a little bit. Now this is where you'd have to use just one shim because it can't fit two opposing. So I'll work my way from the bottom and then we'll check, make sure we got nice and plumb this way so there's no twist, which there shouldn't be. Perfect, nice and plumb. They're plumb, they're square. So now what we'll do is we'll grab the multi-tool and I'll trim off the shims, and then I can install the side panels. So those get screwed and glued. So there's panel adhesive for those. I bought a new one, fresh one, uh, instead of using mats. Mm -hmm. So got myself a new one. It's, it is fuel, and we and we only have the M18 
No M12, so I bought, I went full regalia. Yeah. yeah. All right, I'm gonna do the side panels now. Yeah, we're gonna get cinnamon rolls. <laughs> I won't get any, I don't wanna, that'd be cruel, unusual punishment to eat cinnamon rolls in front of you. Or I'll just do a 72 hour and then. Have one or two. Or 12. No, cause you, you know, once you break the seal, that's, it's over. That's what, it, that's what it is. We can't let you, I'm gonna eat responsibly. We're just gonna eat meats and y'all yeah, eat vegetables. Yeah, well, that's why I'm buying the gym. That's the whole point of going to the gym there and then we're working out in the gym downstairs. All right, well, we're good then. The nice thing about these is they don't weigh very much. If this was wood, it'd weigh five times. <laughs> nice. Yeah, that one looks pretty good. Yeah. Let me throw a clamp on it. What do you wanna do? You wanna go? Get flush, flush, no, flush with the cabinet. If you're gonna do that, it should be flush here. Yeah. What I'm doing is we get it set up and then I go up top and mark the top of the cabinet against the back side of this and then we can trim it. You wanna be careful with these panels things. You don't wanna set it down like on the edge because it's soft, so you'll jack it up. You really wanna set it flat side, not. Yeah, not like top. wood, yeah. And then when you cut these, cut them from the back side so the saw would go against the back side here so as the blade's spinning it's cutting this way into the wood otherwise or into the composite otherwise it would splinter it and screw it up same thing you would do with like a veneer plywood yep no the cut edge over here uh, yep that's it So what I'm using is liquid nails paneling, wood and foam molding. So this is exactly what you want to use. And you glue and screw it. So this is our back edge, that's our front edge. So be mindful when you're squirting the adhesive, don't put it too close to this edge because when it squeezes together, it's liable to squeeze out the front. So stay a few inches back. So let's make sure the back's in all the way first. There you go. Cool. Let's go right here first. And we use the same screws we screwed the cabinets together with, the number eight by inch and a quarter. Look, they're pretty wonky and tight. Yeah. Now they're, I mean, they're sturdy now. That looks good. Let's do this one. So we learned a lesson on the last one. Put the back in first. Yeah, grip the stucco, and we had to pull a few screws and get it out because the 
the back was against the stucco and it would, you can't really reach back there to push it in. So now we're tipping the back and screwing the back in first and then bringing the front out. So took everything off to uh, get it installed. Now you just have to put the, uh, the hinge screws back into the, into the cabinet front box. And what I've been doing is to be sure you don't overdo it, you want to go light trigger on these because um, you want to strip these out. So I've been starting them by hand. Make sure they're on the same thread pitch that they were screwed in initially. And then just go in nice and slow and easy with the impact. Little finesse goes a long way here. See that one already is no good there, so we have to. So luckily these are slotted. So once you get the height adjusted, you can take the screw out and there's usually enough meat. You can drive the screw in above or below the hole that's already there. Cause this screw right here, you can see I can pull it out with my fingers. So, but I could put it right now, I could put it below that one, but I'm not sure where the door is going to end up. So after I get it set, I'll come back and put that other screw in. Yeah. True Precision Tools cabinet jig. And so, what we're doing, and then we're doing uh, top knobs, my favorite knobs. These are uh, T304. So they don't have a lot of styles in 304, and they don't do 316. But these are T304 for outside, so they won't you know, corrode. And so, you know, I found the position roughly where I want these. So, what you do, Set up your jig. You can get the tape measure out or you can eyeball it. But we're gonna use the long screws. I mean, it kind of stinks, it's like they give you a, they don't give us I guess these are probably galvanized. Yeah, there's something, they're coated. Yeah, so maybe they won't rust. I think they're yeah, they kind of do look like they're galvanized. Yeah. So there's a short screw and a long screw. We need a long screw, we just need to cut it down. So what you do to get the jig set up the way you want, take your, again, you can measure it, or you can just take this and just screw it the jig like this. And make sure it's, I've already set it up, and make sure it's the way you want. And then the cool thing about this, take this thing like so, flip it around. Get this position here, this position here, and then I can get a steady or even, whatever you want to call it, exact layout and spot yeah. for your holes. Yeah. Make sure your finger's not behind it. If you need an extra hand, how I was doing it too, is you could use this. You could clamp it if you wanted to, if you needed an extra hand. And these. The old steady mitts Mormon doesn't need any of these fancy tools. You got me? <laughs> Get hit one eye, I got another. Just work. 
ったら<笑> That's it, Mike. That's pretty much it, buddy. So just hardware, which Matt will do. And then we'll uh, we'll tackle that, start tackling that to Monday. Hey, just stand back. All the gaps look pretty uniform. It's square. That's it. We have, obviously, we still have toe kicks to do on both units. We'll probably do that first on Monday. So the toe kicks go between the panels at the bottom there. So there's gray uh, toe kick that we have to install. I don't know if we'll be able to use a table saw because it's going to taper. So that's why you do toe kick last because you get everything leveled. And obviously the concrete, you can see it actually swales and it's high on the right. So we'll have to measure and lay that out and cut to, to follow the contour of the concrete best we can. Three quarters. Four and a quarter. 